going to start writing on the board. Mm -hmm. on the board. Now, a lot of these are supported if you have them by your own old handouts. If you have your old handouts and you have the notes on them, you will find that you can pull from that to help you study. Because you might need one first. So you might need one. Okay, first, you know I'm going to add something to the bacteria because I want to keep everybody as current as possible. Current as possible. What was the one I just erased in lab? Do you remember? I said you need to know it for class, but not for lab. Well, you do need it for lab. Can you test your program? Not the bacteria. Not the bacteria you need to know for the test. You need to know lab. In fact, in the movie that I get to show it to you, a medical doctor says that it was kept secret in one hospital for a while because they were worried about really terrorizing people. Real bad from getting in to give a systemic infection by traveling a catheter. Catheters can be bad news because it can help an organism spread into the person's body. Of course, they always form biofilms too. What else can be bad news for helping a systemic infection? Take an organism straight and spread it to the whole any sort of stent, those ports. People have ports for dialysis. People have ports for chemotherapy. It's not kept clean. Those are highway systems into the body. Highway systems into the body. Okay, the example I have for this is, is the name of a type of family, Klebsiella. Klebsiella, that's a ground negative we don't need a rod. We have to do this biochemical test to help our serotype or something to identify. Yes, there is a Klebsiella pneumonia that causes pneumonia. There are also environmental Klebsiellas that do nitrogen fixation. This one I'm talking about is the CRE. Carbon is a very strong red dot. Okay, now I'm going to back to the ones you've already heard about. Bacillus. We have two spore forms. Bacillus is one of them. What's the other one? Clostridium. Bacillus has, well, in regard to what I'm focusing on, one pathogen, two possible antibiotic producers, and one that relates to farms, croplands, and agriculture. Let's start with the pathogen. What is the pathogen for Bacillus? Anthracis. Anthracis. And what is it called? Anthrax. We still have the Senate office sealed uh, because somebody had the letter, opened it up, a little white powder came out. It wasn't flour. What was it? <coughs> yeah. Spores. Spores. They haven't been able to get those out yet. And like I said, what they sometimes do is something so badly contaminated that includes some of the old research places from long ago. They seal them shut. And nobody ever goes in or out again. They seal them shut. Okay. Now, let's talk about the ones that can be antibiotic producers. <coughs> Excuse me. This doesn't erase very well. Come here and clean this. Bacillus polymyxin. Polymyxin. Let's make it right. Here you go. That's much better. Polymyxin. It makes an antibiotic. What antibiotic does it make? Polymyxin. Polymyxin. It's one of those triple antibiotics on the tosyl cream if you have that, that combination. Now, one thing I want to emphasize a little bit more on my teaching. When you have a scientific name, you always capitalize the first word and you always have small caps for the second part of the name and you always underline it or italicize it. If people are sort of mixing it up, I'm going to focus on that a little bit better to have better technique in the future. Okay, the other antibiotic producer is Bacillus lithoformis. I'm running through 100 bacteria in the Lithoformis. He can produce 
I form a bacitracin. Bacitracin is again on that top antibiotic, triple antibiotic cream. Yes, there are other organisms that are a source of bacitracin, not just him. Now, the other organism from bacillus creates the Bt toxin. Do you remember what the Bt toxin is? I can't see it. Let me move it over here. Let's go. Bt toxin. Bees bacillus. T stands for thuringiensis. 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 Bacillus thuringiensis. You remember that, right? Thuringiensis. That's the Bt toxin. That kills bugs, insects, pests that eat up the crops. They have genetically engineered some of our crops so that the Bt toxin is actually being made by the crop. It doesn't have to be dusted on from the bacterial culture that it was made from. And then you get into a whole argument on whether that's a good idea or a bad idea. Sometimes Japan and sometimes Europe won't accept our crops <coughs> because they are genetically engineered. And you have to make your own decision about that because I'm not going to tell you what to think. I'm not going to tell you what to think. Now, that's your bacilli. I'm obviously going to move to who? Now remember, bacilli are big rods that have the spores. The spore is on the center, located in that center is bacillus anthracis. Anthracis swells it up. Clostridium is not all bad guys. Let me not teach you that if they're all bad. There are a few that are industrially important to give us some good fermentation products. But the four for medical personnel are the four like Clostridium. Clostridium who? Tetanine. 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 What are the others? Perfringes. Perfringes. Difficile. Difficile. Botulinum. So Clostridium perfringens causes gas gangrene. Clostridium difficile often shows up in people who have been given antibiotics for a long period of time. It is what? Diarrhea. Diarrhea. Clostridium tetani, please be sure you have your 10 year booster shot. Okay? It is locking the muscles to you actually almost you die of suffocation, your lungs stop. Clostridium botulinum is the most or one of the most potent neurotoxins that's biological. Of course it's an anaerobe, but it can grow in all those cans with that nice little puffy lid on it. I swear I'm gonna go to a grocery store or somewhere and get me a can with a puffy lid on it. <coughs> no, I'm gonna feed it to y'all. I know I'm not gonna eat it. So clostridium perfringes is the same gangrene that Diabetics have no. No. It's one of the causes of gangrene. It's the one where they can actually the gas can actually help blow up some of the media. There are well, there are multiple causes of diarrhea. There are multiple causes for gangrene. Multiple causes for gangrene. Good question though, because it can be confusing. Now, in our food industry, they're very worried about spores, and they have to keep what heat and pressure in the candy to be sure nothing happens. Be sure nothing happens. Next one, carotid bacteria. Who is carotid bacteria? Diphtheria. Diphtheria. Yeah. That we don't see very much because we have a very good vaccination at this point in time, right? Mm -hmm. But what does it cause if it appeared? Pseudomembrane. The leathery part, the pseudomembrane, the leather in the back of the throat. The leather in the back of the throat. Lactobacillus, excuse me, good guy or bad guy? Good. Usually good guy. Okay, can be in the vaginal area. Of course, he produces acids. He doesn't kill himself. He just produces the acids and stops his own growth. But he also stops the growth of some other organisms that might be scattered in the area that are not bacteria. What organisms will he stop? Yeast. Yes. Yeast, candida alicans. He, of course, can be in yogurt. It's very healthy to eat yogurt. And it keeps you safe. Flip side, he produces acids. If you don't brush your teeth, and you get enough lactobacillus mixed in with other organisms on your tooth, what's the acids going to do? Are the acids going to do? You're going to get tooth decay because they eat through the enamel. The organism I taught for being important, and yes, there's a whole bunch more than this, just this one, for causing tooth decay is who? Do you remember? Who was the organism I taught with biofilms, tooth decay, has a capsule, 
when you go, sorry, this is for fun. I kind of make a learning. When it comes time, and you get your stocking or whatever your gift is, and you eat your candy, and you have your cake, you got sucrose there. Think about this organism, okay? <laughs> and he's immediately going to break down the sugar that you just ate. He's going to cut the sucrose into fructose and glucose. Half of it's going to make a capsule. It's going to enable him to form a what? Biofilm. Biofilm in your teeth. And it's going to, other organisms are going to come and join. He's going to be there. Biofilms also concentrate the products. He produces acids. So while you're enjoying your candy or cake, you're helping feed who? Newtans. Uh, Newtans. What's the first name? You can't just say coli. You have to say this. I don't remember. Streptococcus. It was. Streptococcus <laughs> mutans. You're right. You're right. <laughs> Streptococcus mutans. Mutans. He loves sucrose. He loves it. He helps him build that capsule, helps him stick, helps him build the biofilm. <coughs> now, how can you get rid of that? How can you avoid that capsule? <coughs> Change the carbon source. You only just, you know, I mean, of course you can avoid sucrose to a point, but change carbon source. Get one of those sugarless gums that have a non-sucrose carbon in them, and that's what goes through your mouth, and he can't use that. He can't use that. So that works. It does work. Okay? Now, mycobacterium. Oh, you're tired of hearing about mycobacterium. Mm -hmm. Okay. But you're going to know it, right? Mycobacterium has what in his cell wall? Is that a polysaccharide? A sugar? Sugar is a polysaccharide. No. no. Is it? So lipids. It's like wax like. Okay. So therefore, he's the second hardest to kill because he's got that extra layer, holds his water in, doesn't dry out very often. What two diseases would I do this lab? Tuberculosis. Leprosy, tuberculosis and leprosy. The resistance are resistant forms of tuberculosis, and you have to spell out. You can't just say tuberculosis. You can't just say mutans. You got to put both like ping pong. You got to put both parts of the name down because science doesn't work that way. Resistance is developing to tuberculosis. Why? People aren't finishing the medication. And they cough. They spit. Spit dries up, goes up into the air, and right now it's respiratory. Originally, tuberculosis was not so much respiratory, it was what? Came through the, let's give you a hint. <coughs> Mycobacterium bovis can cause human tuberculosis. Is it Bovis. So cow. Cow. Oh, so the cow. Okay. Cow. What, the bo bovine? Okay. And what did Louis Pasteur named after him? What was invented to help stop that? Pasteurization. Well, that's back to physical methods of killing, well, organisms. Pasteurization. Ramp the temperature up, kill the mycobacterium, which is what they do to our milk, then sell it, and some organisms are still alive because if you left that half gallon of milk there for a while, what's going to happen to it? It's going to grow something. Have y'all ever seen or had fresh milk from a cow? Mm -hmm. I've seen it. I had a grandmother that had dairy cattle. It's foamy. It's foamy. Real foamy, real warm, smells a little bit different. Um, it's, it's weird. It is, well, uh, I'm too simplified myself. I don't like it. She loved it. I, like I went it. pasteurized, processed, and whatever. But she used to have to go out get the big silver milk cans and be foaming up on the top. You saw it too? My aunt, my aunt local had a farm. Okay, there you go. My dad likes oh, it. It's got like a lot of cream in it, and they have to let it sit. Yeah, the cream rises to the top. Mm -hmm. That's true. It's really good. Okay, see? Help like Some people like it, some people don't. Some people can't stand pasteurized milk. No, they hate it. They hate it. Staphylococcus. Are all Staphylococcus MRSA? No. Are all MRSA Staphylococcus? Yes. 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 Can you, and this is going to relate back to the lab, can you spell out fully what MRSA means? What does it mean? Methicillin resistant, Staphylococcus or multiple resistance. Please be able to do that. Can be wound infections, definitely. Of course, you're thinking of MRSA, but even if it's not MRSA, it can be a wound infection. But he's not always bad. He's a resident microbe on some people, not bothering them at all. 
sometimes MRSA in the resident microbes on people. And as long as their immune system's okay, there's no problem. But they can be what? What's a person that can carry an organism but doesn't have a symptom? Just a carrier. Carrier. Remember typhoid Mary? Mm -hmm. She died on an island. She died two of course was carrying typhoid. That is sad. I feel bad for her. Why? Too. She infected everybody else. <laughs> Yeah, that's what I said. She wouldn't stop going places and exactly. cooking. She needed to quit that. <laughs> yes, she did keep going back and get into. She just kept going. She continually went back to kitchens, but that was her only skill. What is this only way you have to put a roof over your head? That sounds you better like find you a sugar daddy then. <laughs> did you hear that? <laughs> she she knew what she was doing, right? Yes, they okay. told her she See? was a source. <laughs> she was very and she still eating. continued. So she deserved to die alone in an island. Oh, oh, <laughs> my oh, 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 compassion. But well, maybe she, just she didn't, didn't have any it. for the people she was killing. Exactly. That's true. It's, it's a balance because what about families that lost somebody? Mm -hmm. That's right. Yeah. So it goes both ways. I wasn't trying to start that. Steph with Cockhouse. What is the grouping for Staphylococcus? How would you call that? Cluster. 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 As soon as you get cluster, like a grape like cluster, you've got Staphylococcus. Staphylococcus. What's the one on your skin that's a harmless resident that you wanted there? Staphylococcus epidermis. Staphylococcus epidermis. Now, all Staphylococcus tend to be resistant to or are tolerant to salt. When we did the mantle salts on his leg. Why? Why would they tend to be resistant or tolerant to salt? Because we sweat. Because we sweat, evaporates off, what we leave behind on our skin? Salt. Mm -hmm. salt. Salt. Okay? Streptococcus. Yes. Can be a flesh eater, but many different organisms can be a strepto can be a flesh eater. There is a streptococcus pneumonia. He can give you pneumonia, of course other things can too. If he has a certain structure around the cell, Caps, capsule. capsule. If he loses the capsule, can he give you pneumonia? No. No. The capsule one helps protect him from phagocytosis, okay? And it helps him what? Stick. Stick to your lungs. Now, there's one that's named after fire Streptococcus pyrogenes. What is that? Strep throat. Strep throat. If you don't treat with antibiotics and it continues on, what can it become? Scarlet fever. Scarlet fever. Scarlet fever. <coughs> you gotta watch out. Now think way back to the beginning of our journey together. And yes, our ship is about to come into the spaceport. We brought the Enterprise home. Oh All right. <laughs> this one was with Semmelweis. He taught the people that worked in his department who were helping deliver babies to wash their hands. He found that jumping from mother to mother to mother to mother to mother was a purpureal fever. Purpureal that killed the mothers, okay? Because, of course, in childbirth, everything can go right back up into a systemic infection or, of course, closer into the womb. That was the streptococcus. That was the streptococcus just like right here. Okay? But wash your hands. And he didn't have such a good ending, but that's okay. All right. I want to add one to the next set. The next set, they, are they bacteria? Are they fungi? Are they prions? Are they protozoan? What are they? Viruses. They're viruses. The one I want to add to that list, which I'll add as soon as they get all the work done on the holiday, influenza. Why would I add influenza? Because you're always going to face it. Okay. Let's talk about influenza. How is it structured? has a what center? There's a clay gas in the center, but it has RNA. Then you have a shell around the outside made of protein called a capsid. In the case of influenza, it's a polyhedron shape, but it has 20 faces of icosahedron. Now, outside of the capsid, you have a phospholipid bilayer, but it's not called a cell membrane, it's called a envelope. envelope. Where did it get that envelope? From your cell. From your Stole cell. it. Stole it from the host cell. <coughs> is it active or inactive? Is it able to transport or do ATP production? No. 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 
please don't tell me cell membrane or phospholipid active layer. It's always called an envelope. Okay. Sticking out, I just said H7, H7N9. I have to keep up all the numbers every year. Okay. So there's a different strain every year? Yep. They change. Okay. They change. Let me see. Yeah, that's the glycoprotein. Glycoprotein is for what? Attachment. Attachment. Now, remember what happens. Influenza has the ability to have antigenic drift. That means it can change its <coughs> It goes into the animals, generally in China and that area. Especially the birds, what are they mostly afraid of? Even more than birds. The pigs. What was the one of the greatest killers of all time? And it came it was influenza that came out of the pigs. Swine flu. Swine flu or flu of 1918. Mm -hmm. Killed more people than World War One. Dropped the life expectancy mm -hmm. average in the United States. That's how many people die. So a flu goes into the animals. Of course, you know how a virus reproduces. Attaches, has entry, takes over, synthesis, assembly, and then some form of release. Some form of release. When it comes out of the animal, it has shifted its glycoproteins or its other parts of its antigenic patterns just a little bit. So when it comes back out and it comes toward our immune system and our body, even though we had flu last year, what happens this year? It's different. It's different. Our immune systems don't recognize it. We have to start all over again. Mm -hmm. Now, the CDC tries to work around this pattern. What does the CDC do before every flu season? Well, they give us flu shots, yeah, but they send, them out. they send a team over to China. They try to figure out how the influenza has drifted, get relevant strains and make a cocktail, maybe three, five, or seven of them, then they come back to the United States and make vaccinations for our influenza for the next year. They raise them, because viruses have to be raised in a living host, right? They raise them in what? Hundreds and thousands and thousands of what? Chicken eggs. Chicken eggs. Chicken eggs. What do they ask you when you have the flu vaccines? Are you allergic to eggs? Eggs. eggs. Okay. Nuts. And then, of course, they raise them and do that. And hopefully, if they get the cocktail right, we're protected. Mm -hmm. If they get the cocktail wrong, yeah. or if the flu drifts faster than the, the flu drifts more before it you know, reaches here, we get flu. We get flu. Viruses can be very, 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 very nasty. Very nasty. Now, coming back to our list, as you know, I'm going to keep going. Two of these in this list can cause colds, and yes, there are other things too. One's very evident by the name, and the other one not so much. Coronavirus. Coronavirus is one. And, uh, and corona? No. Oh. Rhino. Rhino. That's what I said, Rhino. Oh, the other one. Coronavirus. Oh. Coronavirus. Coronavirus, rhinovirus. Right now, breaking out of the Middle East is the MES. They're afraid of it because they're afraid it's going to be a severe respiratory infection. They can cause what? Colds. 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 Okay. They're afraid that MES is going to be at the level of respiratory. What? That it's something it different. sounded like something else, and I was like, colds. Colds. What's a cold? And then it was like, colds. <laughs> Maybe it sounds like coal or something. You know? Yeah, that's yeah. what I thought you said at first. Mm -hmm. okay. Coal. Okay. All right. So, MES stands for Middle Eastern. Okay. It is a coronavirus. It is a coronavirus. The worry about it being as severe. Possibly, but they're not, they don't think it's here yet, as SARS was coming out of China several years ago. It is endemic in a certain animal over there. Or they have found it in a certain animal over there. They're not endemic. You know what animal they found it in? Because y'all answered it before, right? Mm -hmm. Camels. Camels. Camel? Camel. C A M E L S. Camels. <laughs> okay. Is it home? A whole day because it was like Wednesday. I haven't seen that. No, 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 the camel no, no, going to the office. What's today? What's today? What's today? The camel. Hump day. Hump day. Hump day. I don't see TV. I don't see more TV. I look up kids through the internet, but I never get to see a TV show. I've never seen. I've not seen a full movie in forever. Okay. You know what camels can do? 
Don't drink water for long, long time. <laughs> yes. <laughs> they spit water, very well. Yeah. They're very good for spitting. Okay. Yeah, they spit on like people. The, what is it? Uh, Llama? Yeah, Lama? they spit too Lama. 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 I like llamas. I think they're really needed. <laughs> I'm not sure about camels. They don't have that attitude. So the bad news is that a little part of camel got tuberculosis in. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you'd have to arrest them because there are laws against that type of thing. <laughs> <laughs> you would put them into jail. Okay. Oh, All right. Interim bonds. Okay. 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 Interim bonds. What is interim bonds? And it's not a size. It's polio. Polio. Thank you, polio. That's the one I want you to know for enterobiotics. It's a type of polio. Well, it is polio. You do know that Franklin Delano Roosevelt had polio. Mm -hmm. And that they hid it, and he was actually in a wheelchair almost all the time, and they just always arranged it. So it looked like he was just sitting, or was almost like he was standing. Okay? Polio. All right, Epstein Barr virus. Two presentations um, offhand. In the United States, it is mononucleosis, and you get very tired. Of course, your white blood cells are not there. But you can catch it from just a glass that somebody else has drank out of. It doesn't have to be the kissing disease. If you handle their dishes and they left saliva, you can catch it. Right? But in other parts of the world, it's not mononucleosis, it's lymphoma. What is lymphoma form of? Yes. There's got to be something there. There's a slight difference. Of course, it's a very bad difference. A very bad difference. Okay, hang in there. I know we have a lot of information in between. So you say mononucleosis? Mononucleosis. You make you very tired, very fatigued. can actually harm your liver if it gets far enough, but you shouldn't go that far. Supposedly, the only, the only way they deal with it is they tell you to rest. They tell you to rest. Is that the mono that causes fever, or is that different? You can get fever. You can get vomiting, but it's got to be a very strong case. It's got to be a very strong I know one person that had vomiting from it, but that was a very strong case. Okay? Papilloma. Papilloma. It's actually what? transmitted in these parts. What? what? You got three of them sticking in at once. Let me catch it, okay? Herpes. Yeah. Okay, but also think cervical cancer, possibly. Mm -hmm. Okay, not really herpes, it's scratch herpes out there. Okay. Papilloma, think warts. cervical cancer and warts, benign warts. Not herpes, it's a little different. And there's a Gardasil, you know what Gardasil is? Mm -hmm. It's a vaccination given to adolescent females and males, and it helps prevent cervical cancer or this. As young as age 24. But now they were saying it was causing yeah. something else, too. What's it causing? I don't know. I didn't grasp it, but they were saying it was causing something else. They, really? They I'd love for you to find that out and send me an email. I'd like to know. They what were saying? They, as young as nine. As young as nine, Neil? No, my sister. Mm -hmm. At nine? Nine to 24. Yeah. That's why I have with students that say it goes up to 22, 24. I would love to know what's showing yeah, what up, if there is something. Yeah, I saw that somewhere. I forgot. I would love to find that. Okay, but we have to have references. Always go to watch your references. Wiki is not it. <laughs> I love Wiki. I think it's interesting and fun to read, but I wouldn't use it as a reference. Okay, I use it as a reference. But I'm worse. I heard a case from a dermatologist. Uh, I hope y'all come back and tell me stories too, because I like to hear stories from everybody. They had an adolescent that, from the back of his neck down to the top of his hips, he was covered in warts. They had to do a chemical treatment. They didn't do liquid nitrogen. They used the chemical burn off. Can you imagine that poor kid? I can't imagine. And then, of course, you have to get a shower after a while and wash it off. They warn the family because it's a virus <coughs> that it is contagious. So every sister or brother he had, including the parents, anybody else, depending on their immune system, he could give it to them at the house or other places. So they told him to not share towels. To not even have soaps. I mean, that seems a bit far, but they told them not even to have soaps. <coughs> Question. And, and with washing the clothes, it had to be separate too, right? Because they just said, don't just wash the clothes between times. Maybe they're thinking of washing away mm -hmm. physically, not killing it physically. Okay? Right of virus we already talked about. Varicella. Varicella. 
when you first get it as a child, hopefully now as an adult, it's more intense. It is what? Chickenpox. And yes, there is a vaccination for that now. I asked a pediatrician, actually a pediatrician nurse, I said, if a person gets the vaccination for chickenpox, can they get what later? Shingles. Shingles. Because the virus goes latent. Latent means it's what? It's quiet dormant. and it's dormant. Quiet inside your cell, it can express if induced. While your immune system goes down, maybe you get stressed. Okay? Shingles. They said yes. Yes, you certainly can get So the, the chicken virus is not um, the chicken pox <coughs> vaccine. It's not to prevent them from getting chicken pox. It's just to get a leak. It is to prevent them from getting chicken pox. It's to prevent chicken pox. But I hear there's no vaccination for shingles, too. And not everybody that's had chicken pox gets shingles. Most of the people don't. Okay, My grandmother, however, did. And it's very painful because it's the nerves. It's the nerve cells. Okay. So Yes. Why does it normally affect poor people instead of younger people? New system starting to get weakened. I have a friend, she's 17, and she got the shingles recently. But her doctor said it was because she was really stressed because of the test. Yes. Wow. You know what we want to talk about stress in the immune system? What do we say stress does to the immune system? It, um, it weakens it. it. Weakens it. What cell does it kill? the most is most toxic to it. And remember, the stress hormones, cortisol, the T, what cell? T, 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 T,
a tetrapeptide. Tetrapeptide. Peptide means protein, tetra means there's often four amino acids in part of it. And they're tied at different places, I'm not going to worry about where. Penicillin affects this by stopping what? Tetrapeptides. Doesn't allow the tetrapeptides to cross tie the locks. Doesn't let them form. If the cell wall is already formed, will penicillin do anything? No, because the ties are it's already tied together. It doesn't untie anything. It just prevents the tying from occurring. So the cell for penicillin to function has to be making cell wall. It has to be growing or has to be replicating. Otherwise, penicillin doesn't work. But on the flip side, so there's so many flip sides, I'm sorry. E. coli reproduces less than 12 minutes. Some organisms reproduce like every 15, 20, 30 minutes. They're almost always replicating, aren't they? Okay. All right, tetrapeptide. What's the name of this? It is peptidoglycan. I always try to teach why things are named something or why something occurs. Peptido means protein. There's your protein. There's your protein right there in that cross tie. Glycan means sugar. In that case, that's your name and next because those are complex polysaccharides. That's why it's called peptidoglycan. They are going to go to ground positive versus ground negative. Let's wake you up. This is going to be one group. This is going to be the other group. Y'all come up and draw the ground positive cell wall, and y'all draw the ground negative. You want to do that? You can say no. It's okay. You don't want to do that. I don't want to draw. I don't you don't want to draw. No one wants to draw. Anybody? No. Do you, you have a diagram to show me? I can draw this. You can look at any notes. You can look at anything. <laughs> If you don't want to do this, then I'll tell you what, guide me through it. I start drawing it and you tell me if I'm doing it right or wrong. Would that help okay. you out? Yeah. Sure. Okay. So I'm not trying to put you on the spot. I'm trying to. They say always vary your voice. Because you've ever been somebody that's lecturing and it just goes like this and it never stops. Yeah. What happens to you? <laughs> <laughs> what happens if I don't do something to wake you up or get you engaged? You fall asleep. So this sort of woke you up, even if you don't feel like you want to do it. So I'll do it for you. Y'all going to you gonna have to guide me. Look at your notes. Fine. I think about ground positive cell wall versus ground negative cell wall. Okay, first, and I know this, so it's not like, one has a very thick layer of peptidoglycan that is directly exposed to the environment. Ground positive or ground negative? Ground positive. Ground positive. Ground positive over here. Okay. Quick, tell me the names of three real positive organisms. Staphylococcus. Staphylococcus. Streptococcus. Bacillus. Clostridium. All those are real positives. All of them. Okay? All right. You're awake now. I've got people, your eyes aren't glazing over anymore, which is a good thing. Okay. That's the whole point. I can't teach you. I can't keep you awake, right? That's supposed to be a thick layer of peptidoglycan. That's right. Okay. This is outside. This is in. <clears throat> well, what has to be here? Every living cell, of course, the virus is in their own group, has to have what? To control entry and exit. Phospholipid bilayer. That's your cytoplasmic membrane. You've got to have that cytoplasmic membrane. That's what the virus does what with? That's what the virus does. Steals it. Steals it. It's a thief. Not only makes you sick, it's a darn little thief. Okay? All right. Phospholipid bilayer. Of course, this is inside. And I come back to one of the things for ground positives that you've been telling me about, which is very special to them. Ground negatives have more layers. If you think about this being a sandwich with two, that's sort of a sandwich. I guess you think it's like a piece of toast with some jelly, okay? But can you think of sandwich with multiple layers for a ground negative? A ground negative. Ground negative. What is, let's say this is outside. It would be, wouldn't it be two layers of that with a periplasmic space in between? <coughs> yeah. That's should be Pretty darn close. Yes, yes. What you have outside what? Phospholipid bilayer. 
Y'all should be up here drawing this. Mm -hmm. It'll make you wake up. And also get you moving to get more oxygen. That's your outer cell membrane, cytoplasm mm -hmm. Okay? Then you have that space, and y'all already told me the name of it. Paraphrasal space. I'm not trying to put my back to you. I'm trying to write and get out of the way. Paraplasmic space. It has some enzymes in there that help digest nutrients coming in. It has some protection points, whatever. It has gel. Some people call it the paraplasmic gel, not the paraplasmic space. It has a very thin layer of what? Peptidoglycan. Peptidoglycan. Very thin. Still, though, there, right? Still there. Am I finished? There's another bilayer. There's another bilayer? Different. Okay, where does it go? Here or here? On the bottom. On the bottom. On the bottom. That is your actual cytoplasmic membrane. Not that they both don't have the ability to control entry and exit, they do. There are two very unique structures. One for the ground positive, one for the ground negative that I don't have up here. Let's start with the ground negative. He has, with his head buried in the outer cell membrane, a possibly dangerous compound structure. Remember what it is. No, that's no positive. A lipopolysaccharide. The head is buried, the head is called lipid A, and then he has the polysaccharide that he built. See, she's saying, come up here, Evan, right? Yeah. No? Okay, I'll give you a hard time. As long as it stays sealed in the outer seal membrane, do you have a problem? No, because what's the other name for the lipid A part of this? What's the other name for it? It's not endotoxin. Endotoxin, thank you, endotoxin. Also call it endotoxin. And probably in small quantities, not a really big problem. But if you have a massive, what, ground negative infection, and you suddenly crack open, break apart the structure, you're releasing all the structural pieces into the environment, which would be the body. Then you would leave, release massive quantities of what? Lipid A or endotoxin. Depending on the person's sensitivity and how it is released, you get bleeding, shock, and go all the way to, what's the worst? Anaphylactic shock. So you have to watch that. And then here at Mission, Grail Positives also has extra tie downs. I should use a different color when I stick with this one. That can help tie the peptidoglycan like together into the cell membrane, but only in Grail Positives called Tycholic acid. Tycholic acids. Tycholic acids. Okay, give me the name of five real negative organisms. Then go to five. E. coli. Klebsiella, carbapenem resistant. Of course, not all Klebsiella are CREs, okay? But yeah, don't go there, just now. Some CREs are Klebsiella, some are other types of real negatives. Okay, Klebsiella, CREs, some of them. E. coli, what are three others? What? Is it Proteus? Proteus, that's one, yes, because that's your lat negative versus your lat positive, your E. coli. Two more. Those are hard. <laughs> what we, what we do is after the last terms, I go through all the incubators and I clean everything out. It's all I collect and all fruit flies leave. They go back to the orchids probably. Then the next time we get some more plates out with those scents, they all come back. <laughs> okay, we got three. What's, what's two more, please? Is enterobacter? Enterobacter is one. Yes, that's one of the ones we actually did in the lab. Enterobacter. Okay, how about homophilus influenza? Misnamed, right? Wrong name. Because what's the flu? A virus. A virus. RNA virus. Okay. How about Bordetella pertussis? What is that? Whooping cough. Whooping cough. In fact, that list I just gave you. That list I just gave you. Plus all the others, there are many others, and there are many others. It makes a big difference sometimes in your medicines. 
You cannot use penicillin on brown negative. Penicillin cannot penetrate very well that outer cell membrane. But this peptidoglycan layer is completely exposed to uh, the environment, which is your body. And penicillin can get to it. Can get to it. So is that the same as <coughs> topical? Like penicillin, topical penicillin? Can it be used on grab Penicillin is so, yeah, penicillin can kill. Could be a topical, but you can also take it internally. Internally. All right? Can I get that? Okay. That's the front part. That's the front part. We're going to head for the back. If you've already done this, we're going to do a puppy frog. There's even visualization. I just need to get something from this board. Now, do fungi have peptidoglycan? No. <coughs> Do viruses have peptidoglycan? Yes. Do parasitic protozoans have peptidoglycan? Mm -hmm. Let's just note everything, right? Except for bacteria. Okay, virus types. Well, types mean shapes. We have three major shapes of viruses. Okay. One you already know about: the polyhedron, right? That's your flu virus. Virus. And technically, I suppose he drawn 20 faces. You also have a helical. Of course, that means a helical, helices. But then there's a category where you throw everything else because it doesn't fit into a fit category called complex. Now, an example of complex could be this one. I used to call it the lunar lander, but it's been so long since the moon landings, people may not remember. Is that an animal virus or a phage? A phage means bacterial phage. That's a phage. That's a phage. If I say phage, what is the only target? Bacteria. Bacteria. Yeah, I know a virus has a capsule, right? Animal no. virus can have it. No. Not capsule. Don't say capsule for a virus. The envelope. Envelope. Right. Never say capsule. And it's not a capsule because capsule is a complex polysaccharide. The envelope is an <coughs> inactive phospholipid bilayer. Yes, but I understand why it all gets going together. I do it. Everybody's done. I've done it myself. This is a T4. A T4. He's going to come up, he's going to attach, right, to a bacterium, which is what he's going to do. It's called complex because he's got. Almost like a polyhedron head, but he's also got a tail, he's got a tail plate, he's got fibers. He does not have what? What you just said? The envelope. Doesn't have the envelope. Now, the next thing he's going to do is what? Sir. He's going to inject. In this case, he's a DNA virus. He's a DNA virus. He's going to start taking over the host, which we'll go over in just a minute. I want to talk about another structure for virus. That's a complex. By the way, smallpox is also considered a complex shaped virus. It has an hourglass. If you see an hourglass inside the different capsids, you don't want to see an hourglass. Okay? You know what an hourglass is, right? Okay. Now, this is going to be drawn great, but I'm going to try to draw a polyhedron. For 20 faces. Please forgive my drawing. <laughs> this is your nucleic acid. What's the protein shell called? Capsid. Capsid. Where's your capsid over here? And that's exactly right. Where's your capsid over here? The whole shell is the capsid. Now, both of these cases, they have smaller units of protein that make up the capsid called the capsomere. capsomeres. And you can see these with electron scanning. And it'll make like a face, because these are triangular. Those are capsomeres. This is supposed to be an influenza. I need to draw what? An envelope. The envelope is actually, as we always said, inactive phospholipid bilayer. H and N. What are those? Both are the glycoproteins. H and N, at least for influenza. And they serve for attachment. 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 
that makes sense. Right? Okay, I'm trying to be sure I'm covering everything. The click acid type envelopes if present and where derived from. I think you're tired of hearing that it comes from the host cell, taken from it. Replication, let me go back over here. Attachment, entry, what's it going to make happen? In some cases, especially if it's a bacteriophage to the chromosomal DNA, will make it great. That doesn't have to happen. In animal viruses, it can become latent. We'll talk about that in a minute if I have enough time. Virus is going to make the cell make more viral parts, right? Mm -hmm. So more tails, more heads, more plates, more spikes. Then it's going to have what forced? It's going to force the host cell to do what? Simple. Simple. So you end up with, just put it over there, many, 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 many viruses inside your host cell. And in this case, it's going to be the lytic cycle, because T4 is a lytic phage. What does lytic mean? The cell abruption is releasing It's going to break the cell open. Lysis. Lysis means to break open the cell. It's going to break open the cell and you're going to come out in large numbers. In large numbers. That's the lytic cycle. Now, when it goes quiet inside the host, it's called latent in animal cells, but what is it called in bacteria? Lysogenic or lysogeny. Lysogenic or lysogeny. Now, let's talk about something to give you a little bit of connecting information. When you move to an animal virus, I'm going to move the whole cycle next time. I'm going to show you this before I go to that topic next time. You have an immune cell. Phagocytic, at least this one does, okay? Not all more. He's going to eat the influenza. Okay? Endophytosis. Going to lose the cell membrane. Inside a phagosome, inside your immune cell, will be the virus. The phagosome is going to, inside the immune cell, because it comes off the Golgi body. What's going to head for the phagosome? Lysosome. A lysosome. Lysosome has three parts, toxic oxygen byproducts. Mm. It has enzymes, and it has what? Essence. Well, enzymes. It has a low pH. Mm -hmm. Let's draw it better. That's too much symbolic. Say acidic. These fuse, this is what I was talking about when I was teaching you about one of the antiviral medicines, which is where I'm going. One of my targets. Now, you just dumped on top of influenza type A an acidic environment. The acidic environment and now what's called the phago lysosome removes the acid. What did you just do? You just gave it access to your cell. It's going to take over. It's going to take over. One of the antivirals is amantadine. What amantadine does is it raises the pH inside so it's not so acidic, which means what happens to the viral capsid it if it's not acidic anymore? It stays whole. Yeah. Okay? And does the virus affect you? It's effective there at all. Not at all. When you remove that capsid and the virus wants to take over itself, that removal of the capsid is called what? Uncoating. Uncoating. Like if you live in a cold area, which is a nice coming, you take the coat off, uncoat. All right? Does that make sense? And that's a mantidate. That's a mantidate. Now, antivirals, they tell you have to give at the beginning of the infection. Because once the person's well into the viral infection, it's not going to help. Other things to remember with viral infections, which we haven't talked about. But it's all going to tie in together. Because I'm trying to tie in different information to see how it all goes together. You produce massive quantities of mucus in your sinuses, your lungs, your ears, everywhere. What could grow there? A secondary what? Not viral. Infection. Infection. Bacterial infection. Who was misnamed? Because he was always, almost always, not always, there's no almost for this. Homophilus influenza. Homophilus influenza is ground positive, ground negative. 
Brown negative. Brown negative. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. How about 30 seconds? Are there any questions? Does this make any sort of sense? Okay. I will finish up this back. We already did by replication. We're going to work a little bit more on release and budding, which you sort of all know. We did endotoxin. We're going to finish this up and we'll do the next part. Now, we will have lab next Wednesday. But what we're going to do in lab is I'm going to give